that's not important. What have, what have important. been your experiences going up against Caleb Wesson now for a couple of years? Um, you know, I think it's a great matchup between the two of us. Um, I think he's a tremendous player, very physical. He's really transformed his body over the offseason. He's much leaner, much quicker, um, and he's shooting the ball at a way higher level than he was, you know, in the past. So, you know, I'm excited for the matchup. I, I always am. You know, he's one of the better bigs in the country, so it's always fun to go against the best. Yeah, that's kind of the experience of Bakari and Ryan help. They're, they're kind of the guys that get more minutes with CJ out. How, how has their experience helped yeah. you guys kind of weather that storm? No, for sure. You know, you need experience in this league. I think all of our guys are really getting it. Even Joe T throughout the season, he's just gotten a lot more experience. But when you have guys out there who are experienced and know, you know, the right plays to make in, in different situations, you know, that, that definitely helps. And, and I think we're an experienced club, and, and I think we, uh, you know, show that. Look, I'm working on a story on the all-time Big Ten single-game scoring record. Do you happen to know what that is? I have no idea. Rick Mount scored 61 points one oh, time. Oh, wow. That's, that's impressive. <laughs> he scored it against Iowa. Are you serious? For what, what team do you play for? He played for Purdue. Okay. Without wow. the three-point shot. Without the three-pointer. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's very impressive. He lost them. He did. <laughs> <laughs> you, is 61 points, I mean, is that, is that unbelievable to you, or can you see doing that someday? I don't know. I think I, I go and attack every game the same way, and you read, you know, different situations, different ways, and I think, you know, when I get into a, a groove, uh, I think I can put up a lot of points. So I don't know what that number is, but, you know, it's, it's when you get in the zone, I think there's, you know, no one who can truly stop you. So I, I, I wouldn't put a limit on myself. Are you shocked that a record like that could stand for 50 years? I mean, it's 61 points yeah. is a lot of points to put up in the game. So I, I, it's just like kind of like Wilts in the NBA with 100 that no one's going to touch mm -hmm. that. Even, you know, Kobe yeah, got close, but uh, not close enough. So I, I'm not really surprised. You know, Ray, when you set a record that you know high, it's you know, pretty tough to get to, especially in a college game that's 40 minutes. And with all the talented players on each team and everybody getting shots, it's – it's uh, definitely tough. Did you ever score 61 in a high school game? No. I think I scored, I think, in a summer league game or somewhere around there um, <laughs> where I had like 50 or something. But in a high school game, my career high was, in an actual high school game, my career high was like 37. So I beat that this year. Do you know how many points you have, like, as the game is going on? Uh, not, I mean, usually not really. There's... There's a scoreboard sometimes, but you know, I'm usually just looking at the score. But you know, sometimes I could like look up there and see. But you know, that stuff doesn't really bother me. I just play every possession the same way, and, and, and I'm aggressive to score whenever I catch the ball because I feel like I can score every time I catch the ball. So, you know, I'm just trying to make the right play for my team. One of the things after the game, um, Fran said you kind of went into the huddle and said after when you guys were down eight, we're going to win. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was the belief that you have. Where, where do you get that from? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I knew. You know, I was sitting on the, at the scores table when they were going on that run, and, and obviously that's tough to watch. But you know, going there, I knew I had to uplift the guys, and I just really had a feeling that we were going to win that game. And and um, I think you know we're a team that's been in situations where we've been down and, and been able to come back. So you know, me saying that is not new for this, these guys to hear. And I think everybody was able to step up to the challenge of you know combating that lead and, and, and taking. To leave for ourselves. How are you? How are you physically? I mean, we watch you play every game, and you're just getting pounded on. There was one, one photo from the Minnesota game where there were like yeah. five guys hanging on you at once. You know, I feel good. I, uh, you know, I'm just you know battling through the season, trying to you know stay as healthy as possible. But my body feels good. You know, you know, you tweak some things here and there. But you know, I'm a, I'm a guy who lives in the training room. I'm always in the hot tub, the cold tub, trying to work on my body and just uh, you know make sure I can stay consistent and be able to continue to be out there for my guys. So you know, I'm I'm doing good. How fun is that cold tub? How, how long does that take to get used to? It's you know it's definitely pretty hard, and I think you know as recently I, you know I've, I've talked to guys like Peter Jock and, and and talking about how to you know keep your body um, good throughout the entire year, and we've we've had this conversation. We had it a couple of weeks ago, and he was just really on me about being in there all the time. And recently, that's what I've been doing a better job of and mixing up, also going in the sauna, just different stuff, just to keep my body fresh. You're sitting down today as a smoke man. About this, but you guys being able to play multiple positions, how much has that helped you guys weather the injuries and the sickness and everything this year? 
Yeah, it's helped a lot. Obviously, we've, different guys have been thrown into different positions throughout the year um, with injuries and different things like that. So um, just knowing multiple, multiple positions helps, especially late game situations. When coach runs a set, you want to know um, what you're doing. What, where does it where does it matter the most? You guys have been decent defensively. The Sunday you have to be pretty good defensively. The Maryland game here, you're good defensively. Does it help more on on that end, just just in terms of the way you guys can play? I guess a little bit. I think Connor's done a really good job. For the, um, kind of one of the biggest guys, he can play one through four, um, and that really allows me to kind of play the two and three, um, and not usually have to play the four for the most part. So um, having Connor that's able to play that many positions helps a lot for sure. She from Ohio State, Joe. They're a really good team. Um, they obviously had that little stretch in the middle of the year where they struggled, but um, they're also missing some players due to injury, a couple suspensions. So um, when they have their full team together, they're pretty darn good. What do they do well defensively? They're one of the they they're at least in terms of statistically, they do pretty well in terms of holding opponents down. Yeah, I think obviously that's kind of their coaching mindset is to be a defensive team. Um, I think they just have so many athletic guys that kind of get up in your space. Um, Kyle Young is obviously one of those guys, kind of like a glue guy for them. Um, really does everything for them. Um, but then they just have so many different guards that come off the bench um, that are really talented players. How do you play your game? Maybe push the pace a little more than they want, but obviously you could be thin again without CJ. So how, how do you balance that? I guess playing your pace, but not tying yourself up. Yeah, that's been something the coach has been emphasizing is we need to run more. Um, I think guys are playing more minutes, so maybe we're not getting out of running quite as much or um, maybe not every possession. And I think that if we can do that, you know, every play and just emphasize how important it is to get out and run um, and score transition baskets, um, it'll make us that much better. You uh, you had eight boards the other day, played good defense, but didn't score a lot. Are you okay with that as long as the team wins? I mean, it's that's ultimately the goal, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm always I've always been a guy that's gonna do whatever it takes to help the team win. Um, obviously, a little frustrated with myself offensively, um, but after watching film with coaches, I think um, they were pretty they were up into my space, you know, holding me on cuts. Anytime I drove, there was two to three guys that would come and just kind of corral me. So I definitely opened up other shots for other players, and I think the coaches definitely see that. Um, they're just telling me, you know, keep taking the open shots. You know, um, you're drawing so much attention from the other, te the other teams, the other players. That it's opening different things up for our team, and ultimately, it's helping us win. Have you seen teams try to be more? What was last week like for you? Um, it was, I guess, a roller coaster. I mean, um, obviously, with what happened, it was hard not being out there uh, Wednesday with them and uh, at Indiana. But I knew that I actually needed to come out and, and show everybody what I, I'm still capable of doing. And um, with CJ out, I knew that it was opportunity for more minutes and. Uh, a greater opportunity, and I just wanted to take advantage of it. They almost refocus you. Yeah, I mean, I felt like I was doing really good. I mean, basketball, school, socially, uh, prior to the incident in September. Obviously, I made that mistake of driving. I shouldn't have drove. It is what it is. You learn from it. Um, I've been through a lot physically, emotionally. Um, over the course of however many years now, and it was just another, it was just another learning lesson. It was another opportunity for me to become a better man, a better person, a better teammate, um, all of the above. And um, I just think that, yeah, I mean, it happened in September as well. My mindset changed, but I think again after last Sunday it did too. So I'm hoping from here on out, just to give everything I have on the floor and. and be a better role model. Is that the hardest part, letting teammates down? Yeah, I mean, I I, I texted them that morning, and I uh, we have our group chat, and I let them know what happened. Um, that I was sorry. That I knew it wasn't um, the end of the world, but it was a distraction for us during a period of, of games where um, you know we're coming down to the wire here. It's getting close to March. And you know they were all they were all understanding and and knew that I was going to come back um, for practice for games and and, and be ready. So 
Um, I think for me the hardest part is just letting the people down that I care most about, my friends, my family, um, because they know who I am and that's just not me. So it was just, it was frustrating, but you know, everyone can say what they want to say, but the people who, whose opinions matter to me, um, you know, they were there for me for that. Coach said that you had been coming on before that. He saw progress in your game. What, what, what's the reason for that? Are you just feeling better, feeling healthier, just kind of getting in a groove? Um, yeah, I, I think the big thing for me is I'm just, I, I feel loose again. I feel like I can just go out there and, 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 and be myself. Um, last game was a big positive for me. I, I finally felt like myself again, playing like the old me. And, you know, we just want to keep moving in that direction. You know, we don't know how long um, or what CJ's uh, plan is here the next few games. But, um, you know, every opportunity I get, I want to make the most of it. Was it more of a mental thing for you in terms of not feeling like yourself before? Was it still physical? Oh, yeah. N nothing physical at all. It's, it's, it's all been in my head. I've, um, you know, been down on myself, lacking confidence, stuff like that. But I felt more like the aggressor in that Minnesota game, um, making more powerful and, and precise moves, knowing what I want to do with the ball when I catch it. Um, sometimes I just feel like in this position where I'm not sure what to do, but I felt more like I knew what was at, what was asked of me to do, and I, I tried to go out there and do it. So that's the goal from here on out. It's just play with that confidence and that level of game that I know I have and that I know I'm capable of doing and hoping to impact the game positively. Was basketball still fun for you being kind of a key to this team just not missing a beat? Mm -hmm. How have you guys maybe embraced that this year, just knowing all these? Uh, yeah, it kind of, that's something you kind of have to do when you, uh, you lose numbers like we have this year. Um, you know, we've always been preaching next man up and whether that's you need to learn a new spot in the offense, learn a new position. Or play out of your comfort zone. That's just something you gotta do to keep the team going. How much does experience assist that? That it's oh, a lot of veteran guys. Yeah, no, that, that definitely helps a lot. Just you know, being around the program instead of maybe you have to just learn like a spot or like a little something different and uh, you know, in a play or something rather than having to you know completely learn a whole new system. Connor's played a lot of the four this year, I mean, despite being a little bit undersized. I mean, how difficult? Is that, do you think, for him to, you know, kind of be undersized, but really not giving up an inch to guys that are 30, 30 pounds bigger than before? Yeah, no, Connor's uh, extremely strong. That's something that he has really to his advantage. Uh, I think that's why, you know, coach is okay with playing by the floor, just because of how strong he is, that he can muscle guys out. Um, but, you know, the only thing he really gives up is, is length in there, but he's also a, a really good defensive rebounder. I think he gets a lot of rebounds and punches it well for us. And so I think that, uh, just, you know, just his strength and his, uh, knack to find the ball coming off the rim or something that's uh, really enabled him to play for it. Difficult, but guard is Caleb Wesson. Probably one of the more interesting yeah, bigs in the uh, Big Ten. I haven't got to play against him since you know he had his, went through his body change that you know you've been hearing about. Uh, I know definitely before this he was definitely a tough guard just because of the way he uses his body and he's able to roll off you and spin off you and stuff like that. Uh, and obviously his three-point shot has been getting better um, than last year, too, so you have to respect that even more. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'll be excited to you know, go up against him. Uh, you know, he, he likes to get deep post position, finish over either shoulder and stuff like that. It seems like he might be one of the better passing big guys in the league, too. I mean, have you yeah, seen that? Uh, the, you know, they do a lot of stuff where they throw him at the high post. He throws backdoor cuts to people, um, uh, you know, sets guys up. Uh, if that's just stuff in the offense, they run a lot of uh, screen to screen interaction for him and uh, for him to look, uh, set guys up that way. I think um, that's just something that makes him more versatile and speaks to how you know talented he is as a player. Um, yeah, I think everywhere I've been, there's been the same type of um, drive and desire to um, you know not make excuses for whatever adversity comes that happens to every team in every season. Um, but I think the difference with this group is I think we've kind of been through it. We're kind of um, we're, it's not a unknown feeling for us um, to face adversity, and we're not scared of it. Um, we've had great games, we've had some bad performances. We never going to continue to keep pushing, continue to keep working, and we're going to continue to fight. How does being a fifth-year senior graduate transfer help you down the stretch in big games like this? 
Um, I think it just helps with experience, just, you know, being through these games, um, having won some, having lost some, just kind of knowing and remembering what plays or what mistakes that may have happened in the past and trying to eliminate them from happening then in the future. It was one of those moments when you knock those two free throws down with the game tied. Was that a ro- the, the kind of moment you've been waiting for in terms of leadership and, and showing what you can do? To- um. I wouldn't say it's what I was waiting for necessarily, but that's something I'm prepared for. Um, we get in the gym every day and we shoot with our coaches. Uh, we make sure we're prepared for all different types of situations. Um, and so in that moment, I just thought it was my chance to help the team, and I was glad I was able to do that.